session is on pre-formulas, and we're going to be focusing on the noble gases. Now, the noble gases and formulas don't seem to go together. It sounds like an oxymoron. If they're noble or don't react, then how can you have formulas? Well, let's look at it. First of all, this chart you see here is the chart that recognized Dmitry Mendeleev. as a person who first put together a the most respected periodic chart. Now, this was in 1869, and about that same time, there was a German by the name of Meyer, and uh, he was not recognized nearly as much because Mendeleev did something with more sophistication, predicting on, on discovered elements and uh, the, the quality of his chart. Notice, no noble gases. It wasn't till about 30 years later that a scientist by the name of Ramsey, uh, with some insight with, with some of his colleagues, discovered there was a whole group of elements not on the chart. And these were then called the inert gases. Inert because they didn't react with anything. The, the inert gases. Well, a mere, and by the way, Ramsey was in the age where Nobel Prizes could be won. In about 1904, he won the Nobel Prize. About 1962, A person, a scientist in the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, discovered that you could actually make a compound with the noble gases. So look at this time period. Bartlett, uh, unfortunately, uh, never won a Nobel Prize. Uh, a lot of people think he should, and uh, he died about three years ago. So let's see where this is going. Okay, over here I have the noble gases, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. Radon is radioactive. This is the atomic number, the number of protons in each atom, 2, 10, 18, 36, 54, and 86. This modern periodic chart you see, that I'm putting up now shows that they're in group 18 of the modern numbering system on the far right side of the chart. You can't recognize any particular pattern here with these atomic numbers, but when you identify the electrons that are in the far outside edges, the outside space of the atom, and we're going to call these the valence electrons. A little crowded there. The valence electrons. You will see an interesting pattern for helium. Two electrons helium has, and both of them are called, the, the full two electrons are called the valence electrons, they are an oddball. When you get next to neon, you'll say that there's eight electrons involved in the outer area of the uh, atom. Two are in the inside of the atom, that's the helium electrons. And the next one, you'll see eight valence electrons. And krypton, eight. Xenon, eight. And radon, eight. So you see there's something very magical about this number eight. Notice the number of protons are 10, 18, 36, 54, 86. They vary. But the outside electrons, where some other atom will see them, it's like walking up to an atom, you only see the outside. Walking up to a person, you don't walk up and say, my, you have a nice looking heart or, or uh, liver. You don't see what's inside the atom. 
So these are what another approaching atom sees, these eight electrons. And sometimes these are called the chemistry electrons because they're the ones involved with the chemistry. When an atom, any atom, achieves eight electron status and the outer domains or areas of an atom, there's an added stability. Added stability. So what does this have to do with formulas yet? Well, we're getting there. On the left side here, I listed increasing atomic numbers. By the way, the first periodic chart and Mendeleev was based on increasing atomic weights. The better chart now, the modern chart, is atomic numbers. So the first element is atomic number one is hydrogen. And uh, let's use yellow here. Hydrogen. And I'm going to put one dot here representing that one one electron. That's all hydrogen has. Now I'm going to go, uh, helium's on the right side, so I'm going to go to the next element, lithium. And it has the two electrons, helium in the inner core, and one outer, one valence electron. And if you keep going down the line, beryllium, boron, carbon, you follow me, atomic number six. Number seven is nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, then sodium, magnesium, and aluminum. And we'll stop right there. Okay. For hydrogen to become stable, to achieve a noble gas shape, it can gain one electron. If it gains one electron, it will look like helium, and it will have a minus one charge. If lithium is to become stable, its, it's easiest possibility is not to gain seven and look like neon over here, but to lose one, and it will look like helium. It loses electron and becomes a plus one. Beryllium, with two electrons, loses two, it looks like helium, it becomes plus two. Boron has three outside electrons. If it loses three, it looks like helium. See the pattern? It becomes plus three. All these are the same look on the outside, but they're different. For, for They have a different number of protons, and most importantly, they're not neutral. They're charged. They can generate, here's the word, you ready? Formulas. The pluses and minuses can combine to zero. Now, carbon could, because it has four electrons, it could look like either helium or neon could be plus or minus four. Actually, it doesn't become either. Nitrogen has five electrons. Now, the closest it can get is look like neon. Oxygen, six electrons. It can look like neon. It becomes a minus three. This becomes a minus two. Fluorine becomes a minus one. Notice all of them. It gains one, gains two, gains three electrons. Sodium is the easiest way for it to become a noble gas is lose one electron. Magnesium lose two, aluminum lose three. And it becomes plus one, plus two, plus three. So all of these have the same number of outer electrons, but they're all in formulas. And our formulas are gonna involve the metal parts with the non-metal parts. And we're going to determine what these subscripts are to have a formula where the total is zero. We're going to stop right there.